Hello once again, everyone. Kata Kosman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter, coming to you from what we're having again, a state of emergency in southern British Columbia. I'm in Vancouver. Two weeks ago, we had uh, the first atmospheric river, which flooded uh, large parts of what we call the lower mainland. The low-lying uh, areas surrounding Vancouver uh, took out all four highways that connect Vancouver to the rest of Canada and the railways as well, the two rail lines. Some of that has been um, fixed, but not the main highways. Uh, really would be more considered roads that have been opened uh, just to commercial traffic, one lane, uh, where the um, two directions have to alternate and um, change sides. Some traffic is being diverted south through the US, uh, which yesterday, um, flooded as well, northern Washington state. Uh, they call it Whatcom County. Um, so I've got some videos to show the extent of what's going on and the damage. Um, it's not pretty. It's quite dramatic. But uh, let's take a look uh, because I'm going to explain the effect on the lumber market and what's going on with the sawmills, more specifically in terms of transportation rather than um, affecting sawmill operations itself. Uh, so here we go. There is a great big ditch right there. Okay, so that first clip of the fellow pointing into the um, big ditch that's full of rain and showing how hard it's raining, it's not just like rain, it's deluge and it's for days. Uh, so what happened here is that, what happened here is that we had the drought in the summer, okay, which is very unusual for us, we're a, a temperate rainforest, which loosens the soil, stresses the trees, loosens the tree roots, all that kind of stuff. Drought in the summer, and then September and October had 200% more rain than usual. Then uh, at the early part of November or in the middle of November, a couple of weeks ago, we had that first atmospheric river, um, that uh, clip of the highway with the rail line running was that at that time. Um, the reason that happened is because British Columbia is a very rugged area and the highways are built wherever you can find reasonably flat with through all of these mountain ranges. It's not like, you know, people are saying, well, where I am, we build a tunnel. Okay, that's nice. You build a 50 mile tunnel through one mountain. That's not, we have mountain ranges. It's, it's a hilly all over and there's rivers, big rivers running through it. So, and I mean, it's not like it wasn't known that this is dicey. I don't know how many people are aware of the show called Highway Through Hell. There's a TV show apparently. That's the Coquihalla, which I'm gonna show you right now. So we build the highways where we can find reasonably flat terrain through the mountain ranges, which happens to be where the rivers are running usually. So when that epic torrential downpour came and the water had nowhere to go because the ground was already saturated from September and October. Uh, there was uh, mudslides and the river carved out under the highways, right? Because the rivers were overflowing their banks. So it's double. Like I said, the two highways, like the roads that reopened are the smaller highways, which had the mudslides not um, dug out by the rivers. The other two highways, which really are highways, the Trans-Canada Highway 1 and the Coquihalla, uh, is not possible to rebuild over this winter. It would take, in good weather, more than several months, and I'll show you why. Um, so, right now, uh, November 30th, okay, so what happened was because the railway couldn't come in, two railways couldn't come into Vancouver, uh, the port of Vancouver, which is um, the third largest by volume port in North America, had to close. Uh, since then, the rail lines have been connected, but it's really dicey because the rain that started last night is supposed to last until tomorrow night. So 48 hours of what we had, 36 hours and 24 hours, twice already. 
Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I'll come back to make another update then. So the lumber and other goods uh, are having a problem moving. Um, so let's just take a look real quick at what happened on the Coquihalla, the main highway that uh, connects through British Columbia um, to the east, to Alberta, uh, apart from Vancouver, gets goods down to the U.S. And then I'll come back at, with some more. Lots of water coming through here. Water finding a new way. Oh my goodness, John. Let's get out here. This is where the campsite used to be. Okay, so the credit for um, those clips is in my caption. It's STE Bros, like Stay Bros. I don't know how to pronounce it. You can look uh, directly. I'll have a link to see um, what's playing out there. But basically what, what happened was this is the first atmospheric river a couple of weeks ago. They, they went by uh, on the highway, on the road, and the camper was flooded. Then they went by and the camper was gone. And then they were there to capture that tree coming down. Then they came back and the car was washed away. So this is the situation is, it's not just that there's huge volumes of water, heavy water flowing on this uh, weakened soil, but there's huge boulders, massive trees, Douglas fir, that camper and the car flowing down, breaking um, the infrastructure for the highways, the bridges and the railways, right? That's two weeks ago. Now we're in, similar amount of heavy rain after all of this has already been going on, right? So uh, in terms of lumber, the um, production at the sawmills isn't really expected to be impacted. I mean, they're uh, up in the uh, central interior, Prince George, Williams Lake, 100 Mile, but um, they can't move the wood. So today, West Fraser, uh, November 30th, announced downtime at its Western Mills and announced that um, transportation of lumber products is down almost 30% and transportation of pulp is down more than 80%. Uh, and again, like if they can't move it, they need to stop production. Um, and in that same press release, um, West Fraser said that demand in fourth quarter is higher than expected. So, um, you know, for construction to be going on in fourth quarter, like I've been saying, that's pretty unusual. Now we have this collision of supply uh, from from my area in the Pacific Northwest being very severely impacted. What's that going to do to prices? If you remember my um, earlier videos where I explained when um, the prices reached so high in the spring, but sales volumes were low. Same thing's going to happen, not because people are holding off buying until they really need to, which is what was happening in the spring, but because there's no wood coming out of major basket here in British Columbia. Um, the other update today was from the Port of Vancouver. Uh, like I said, it's been reopened, but we'll see for how long that lasts. Uh, last week, there were seven vessels waiting to unload. This week, there are 50. Um, so this kind of a backlog again, like you, you can't bring ships in, like it's it's going to cause a real stall in delivery. Uh, so I just have another clip here, give you um, the overall idea of various highways and rail lines and the amount of um, reconstruction that's going to need to take place.
Okay, so like I said at the beginning, um, British Columbia is in a state of emergency. Um, we're rationing gas. So it's pretty serious. It's not that there's no gas. It's that the fuel is going to be needed to bring whatever supplies can actually make it here. Like, I don't know if I'm going to get my mail. How, how is my mail going to come in? What's, what's going to be the priority? Not bananas, right? So, like, lumber is important, but, you know, life-giving essential supplies are more important. Um, I could explain to you why the gas is... It's because our... It's because the um, refinery is in Washington State. So we have the pipeline to take the oil through British Columbia, but it needs to get refined in Washington State and then come back as gas. We won't have our own refinery because there's so few people here. The, any investor to capitalize, it would be like two generations later. So we don't have a refinery. So when something like this happens, they are barging. Like the, the, There is fuel coming, but it, it's not for people to just go see their friends or whatever. That's that's what I mean by rationing gas. Um, for the future, you know, they don't rebuild highways out of wood, but a lot of wood is needed for this kind of construction. I'm sure people are aware by now that the U.S. has launched a really massive infrastructure bill, which was, was needed, and I have talked about that before. Again, concrete forming, scaffolding, you know, pre- uh, site preparation, all these kind of things needs wood. So it's not only about U.S. housing or Canadian housing. It's about other kind of building. And um, through this winter and definitely into next summer, if British Columbia is going to have to rebuild all these highways, um, which you just saw a uh, really big devastation, they're going to divert sawmill wood to ourselves. Um, so like I've explained before, 50% of Canadian lumber is manufactured in British Columbia um, and looked at it um, sort of like the reverse way. 35% of all wood in the U.S. at any time is uh, Canadian. So 14% of wood in the U.S. comes from B.C. As the next year building, which is going to be strong, it's going to be quite strong as we already know, um, comes on, the supply is going to be tight and the price is going to be up. But the prices aren't going to be up in a way that we like. The prices aren't going to be up and, you know, billions of board feet are selling. The price is going to be up, but the volumes are going to be low. So people are just going to need to be patient and sort of stretch out their building projects over a longer period of time than uh, they would normally like to. Um, because things aren't complicated enough, the softwood lumber duty is going to double tomorrow, December 1st. The duty will go from somewhere around six, seven, eight percent, depending on the operator, to eighteen percent. I'm not going to go into it too much here because it's just a lot of math and you know hard to just explain. But I did put a um, post on my website. I put a link to my source, the Jones and Jones Customs Brokers there in uh, Blaine, Washington. Um, they know everything. Mike Jones, tell them Keta sent you from Madison's. He'll talk to you until you don't need to know anymore. Anyway, the lumber duty is going to go up at a time when the market is strong, demand is good, and prices are up. And what happens there is since the Canadian sawmills have a choice, they divert uh, sales away from the U.S. They sell into Canada and they sell overseas. It's going to put another supply constraint into the U.S. Um, this is meant to last a year. The um, administrative review happens once a year and comes into effect. We knew we knew the duty was going to go up already back, um, I think it was July, when it was announced out of um, the Commerce Department. So um, on the Federal Register in the U.S. tomorrow will be, I've got it on my website right now, you can look at it, madisonsreport.com, and that's just going to be another um, crimp on supply. Uh, so it's Tuesday. November 30th, we're not even halfway through the current atmospheric river. Depending on what happens, I will be coming back. Um, I'm going to be doing another video, um, maybe today, at least this week, to do my normal uh, November lumber market wrap-up to show you where the market is at. Generally, December would be very quiet. Uh, 
as of course building um, slows down and the mills go into their annual seasonal curtailment. Didn't really happen last year. Doesn't look like it's going to happen this year. Um, I saw something today from the um, home builder in the U.S. saying it seems like there's no more seasonality in um, building and in home sales. So activity is just, the momentum is just carrying through. Um, so subscribe here uh, on my YouTube to um, be able to see my updates as I make them. Click like so other people can see them. And uh, follow the link to my website, madisonsreport.com. At the top, there's a menu, click subscribe. You can get a sample of all 450 individual lumber and panel commodity prices that we update every Friday, uh, as, long as, as well as the market commentary explaining why the market, what's happening to make those prices change. And then that way you can get all these updates that I make intermittently on YouTube right away on Friday morning with all the other subscribers.